Hello there and welcome to the series of videos going through the content of A Level Further Maths. Here we're looking at the matrices proof by induction section so we can answer questions from exercise 8c. So how does proof by induction work with matrices? Well in proof by induction we're always going to be using the same structure basis assumption induction and conclusion and in generally the way the questions have been phrased or that I've seen anyway is that they're going to involve powers of matrices being multiplied together. Okay, so be prepared for a little bit of matrix multiplication here, and have, if you haven't seen the video already, please do go ahead and have a look at it. Um, but let's go ahead and start this one here. We've got two examples to go through, and then one question at the end. So we've got 1 minus 1, 0, 2 to the power of n is equal to 1, 1 minus 2 to the power of n, 0, 2 to the power of n um, for all positive integers n. And remember, proof by induction only works with positive integers n. We're not going to have matrices to the power of a half, for example. So, basis step, same as always, prove true for n equals 1. So, substituting your n equals 1, left hand side will give you this. Substituting in 1 on the right hand side will give you this. Does it equal the same thing? Yes, it does. So, therefore, the base step works. So, left hand side equals right hand side. The next step is to now assume that our theorem is true for n equals k. So we can assume that if we do this matrix here to any power, this can be simplified in this style here. 1 minus 2 to the power of k in the top right, uh, 1 and 0 on the left hand row column, and 2 to the power of k in the bottom right cell. Let's go ahead now and try and prove this for the k plus 1 matrix, or proving it up for the next layer. So, what we're going to do here is start with our matrix to the power of k plus 1. And what we're going to want to do is we're always going to want to use the assumption step in our third inductive step for these types of questions here. So what we'll do is we'll split this indice up into a power of k on the matrix and a power of 1 on the matrix. And given that we know that this theorem applies, we can now replace this, or what appears on the left-hand side here, with this, what appears on the right-hand side of our assumption. So replace the k-term matrix, or the k-powered matrix, um, with its assumption step in part 2. And now that's all that's left for us to do is multiply out these two matrices here. So multiplying these two matrices here together. So remember we go along the row on the first matrix down the first column in the second matrix. So it's going to be 1 times 1, add 0 times this. 1 times minus 1, add 2 times that. The top right cell is going to be a little bit fiddly. We'll have to rearrange that later. Bottom left cell is going to be 0 times 1, 2k times 0, so that's always going to be 0. And the bottom right hand cell is going to be 0 times minus 1, and then 2k times 2. So that one should be pretty simple to um, simplify. So now let's go ahead and simplify out each of these terms. So the top left hand cell is going to just be a 1. The top right hand cell is going to be minus 1 from the first calculation add 2 from the 2 times the 1 uh, minus 2 to the power of uh, 2 times 2 to the power of k. Bottom left hand cell is 0, bottom right hand cell is just 2 times 2 to the k. And now simplifying the 2 times 2 to the k with 2 to the power of k plus 1, or effectively think of these powers here of 1s and multiply your indices together or effectively add your powers together. We're going to get minus 1, sorry, not minus 1, this minus 1 and 2 will simplify to 1. So it's 1 minus 2 to the power of k plus 1, 0 and 2 to the power of k plus 1. So our final matrix is this, 1, 1 minus 2 to the power of k plus 1, 0, 2 to the power of k plus 1, which is exactly what this theorem would be if we replace k n with k plus 1. So perfect, we've done that inductive step. And the final part here is to do the conclusion. 
So in this case here, as we have proven our theorem true for n equals 1, and we have proven our theorem true for n equals k, we have proven it is also true for n equals k plus 1. Therefore, by mathematical induction, our theorem is true for all positive integers n. n exists in z plus. Okay, so that's how we do it. Let's have a go at a more difficult one now. Minus 2, 9, minus 1, 4 to the power of n can be simplified to minus 3n plus 1, 9n minus n, 3m plus 1, for n exists in the positive integers. It will be more complicated. Each of these cells will have to have some sort of manipulation done to it, but it's still the same uh, structure. Base step. Let's prove true for n equals 1. Left-hand side will give you minus 2, 9, minus 1, 4. Right-hand side will give you minus 2, 9, minus 1, 4. Great left-hand side equals right-hand side. These two are the same. So we've proven our theorem true for n equals 1. Now let's assume that our theorem is true for n equals k. So we're assuming here that we can simplify the power on this matrix here as this matrix here. Next step is to do the inductive steps. And now we want our matrix to the power of k plus 1. So let's split this up into a power of k and a power of 1. We can simplify the power of k with our assumption step here. So replace the power of k with our assumed uh, matrix uh, in step 2 here. And now let's expand the brackets. So all that we've got to do now is a bit of matrix multiplication. So multiplying along and down. So it's minus 3k plus 1 times minus 2. Add 9k minus 1. Going along and down the second column now. Going along the bottom and down the first column, and on the bottom row and down the last column, we get this. And each of these four cells can now be simplified to 6k minus 2 for the first calculation, minus 9k for the second calculation, minus 27k plus 9, add 36k for the second um, cell. 2k add minus 3k times, sorry, at minus the 1. And then the last, the bottom right hand cell is minus 9k add 12k plus 4. Simplify your k's and your numbers together. Now the way that we're going to want to write our final answer is just like this matrix here, but instead of n's, k plus 1's. So each of these n's here, I'm going to want to replace with k plus 1's. So each of these n's replace with k plus 1's and hopefully what we'll have inside our final answer here is identical to it. So can I simplify this to minus 3 brackets k plus 1 plus 1? Yes. Can I simplify this to 9 brackets k plus 1? Yes. Can I simplify this to negative open brackets k plus 1 close brackets? Yes. Can I simplify this to 3 open brackets, k plus 1, close brackets, plus 1? Yes. So that's how I'll write my final answer. So try and write your final answer as your theorem states. Just instead of n's, have k plus 1's there. So now we've improved, we've proved the inductive step there. And our conclusion. So as we have proven our theorem true for n equals 1, and given that our theorem is true for n equals k, we have proven our theorem true for n equals k plus 1. Therefore, by mathematical induction, our theorem is true for n exists in the positive integers. Always, always, always do this conclusion, everyone. Uh, you're not going to get the full marks unless you have the conclusion. Yes, you are writing in English sentences. Get over it, okay? Just do it. Right, your turn to have a go at this question here then. So 3 minus 4, 1 minus 1 can be simplified to this. Obviously, there's going to be a power of n on this matrix here. I don't know how that missed out. Okay, your turn to have a go at this then. Right then, well done for having a go at this uh, question here then. It was quite tricky. Let's go through it together then. So proving our theorem true for n equals 1. Um, the left-hand side is going to be just 3 minus 4, 1 minus 1 to the power of 1, which is just this matrix here. The right-hand side is going to be equal to um, 2 plus 1, which will give you the 3, minus 4 times 1, 
um, 1 down the bottom left and minus 2 add the 1. So in this case here, that's going to give us 3, 4, 1, minus 1. So good, yeah, we've got that. And I, what I would suggest is just show that you're doing the calculations of substituting in 1. Um, just writing our right-hand side as copying it down from the top. Um, you may miss out some marks, so you definitely don't want to do that. Okay, assume our theorem true for n equals k now. Assume n equals k is true. So, in this case here, it's going to be 3 minus 4, 1 minus 1 to the power of k is equal to 2k plus 1 minus 4k, 1, sorry, not 1, uh, k, and minus 2k plus the 1. Great, okay, so this is what we are going to assume. Now we have to prove true for n equals k plus 1. So prove true for n equals k plus 1. So uh, let's start us off. The, our power on our matrix now is going to be k plus 1. So here it's going to be 3 uh, minus, so k plus 1 is the power there. So what we're going to do now is split up this power so it's a power of k and a power of 1. So times by 3 minus 4, 1 minus 1. And then what we do now is now that we've got our uh, matrix to the power of k, we use our assumption step. So we're going to substitute in uh, this matrix here. So this is going to equal 2k plus 1 uh, minus 4k, k and minus 2k plus 1, uh, times by 3 minus 4, 1 minus 1. So let's go ahead and do the multiplication on this now. So it's going to be 6k plus 3 and then moving along and down, minus 4k. Next cell is going to be minus 8k plus 4, moving along and down, plus 4k. Next one is going to be uh, 3k, uh, minus 2k plus 1. And the next cell is going to be minus 4k, plus 2k minus 1. Okay, so there we are. That's the uh, last step there. So now what we want to do is we want to make it kind of look like this matrix here, um, but instead of n's, I want it to be k plus 1's, and we'll see if this works out. So this top left-hand cell is going to simplify to 2k plus 3. Um, is that going to be the same as 2 brackets k plus 1? plus 1, yes it is, that's 2k plus 3. Top right hand cell, um, we're going to have 4 minus 4 brackets uh, k plus 1, is that going to work there, have I done that correctly? Uh, that should be a minus 4 here, yeah that should be a minus 4 and um, the last step here is going to be putting a plus 1 in there. Okay, great. Uh, the next step here is going to be simplifying this. So that's going to be n, so that's going to be simplifying to k plus 1. Yeah, that does. Great. And this step here is going to be simplifying to minus 2 brackets k plus 1 uh, plus 1. Now, that's 2k minus 2 plus 1, yeah, good, that's going to simplify to this bottom right-hand cell there. Excellent, good. So that's uh, that's worked out really nicely. So uh, that's proved the third step there. So the final step is just your conclusion. I'm not going to write it out because it does take too long with this pen, um, but uh, your, th your conclusion is going to be, as we have proven our theorem true for n equals 1, and assuming that our theorem is true for n equals k, we have proven our theorem true for n equals k plus 1. Therefore, by mathematical induction, um, 
3 minus 4, 1 minus 1 to the power of n can be simplified like this for all positive integers n, okay? Right, thanks for watching this video then. Do have lots of practice on exercise 8c. Do lots of these types of questions. Do have a practice at the more difficult ones. Persevere through the challenges that you have and ask your teacher for help if you don't understand anything. Right, thanks for watching.